The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And also bears. We have bears to fear too. Hey everyone, Scott David here, the Director of Investigations at Animal Outlook. There's a new Zootopia series for Disney+, Plus, so let's go ahead and talk about the world of Zootopia. If you haven't seen the movie or haven't guessed from the name or images on screen, Zootopia takes place in a society resembling ours but built by non-human animals. And they have everything we'd expect from a functional society, like cars, phones, and Shakira. In the movie, at least, only the mammals of this world seem to have achieved human-like intelligence, so there's no like bipedal alligators or anything like that. He'd be right at home at Zootopia's Naturalist Club, though. An interesting thing about this society is that carnivorous animals and herbivorous animals live and work together. Lions and zebras, wolves and sheep. A major theme in this movie is the strained relationship between prey animals and the animals who used to hunt them. But if the lions and tigers and bears aren't hunting prey in this society, what are they eating? Why does Ross, the largest friend, not simply eat the other five? When asked about this, the filmmakers revealed that animals who normally eat other animals will sometimes eat plants, but they also eat fish and bugs. There's a restaurant in Zootopia called Bug Burger. You don't see the restaurant itself, but there is an empty container from it in the movie. So the carnivores are now all pescatarians and entotarians? I think that's when you eat bugs. I don't know how birds or reptiles or other animal groups are treated in Zootopia since the filmmakers didn't really address that, but since they did mention bugs and fish, let's go ahead and talk about eating bugs and fish. So it is pretty well known how bad fishing and fish farming are. There's a growing body of evidence that suggests fish do feel pain. They have a lot of the bodily structures associated with that ability. They produce the same opioids that mammals do that help suppress pain when injuries occur. And fish who are given painkillers like morphine reduce their stress responses and return to normal behavior. Animal Outlook actually investigated a salmon hatchery in Maine where fish were having their faces eaten away by fungus, workers were throwing anesthetized fish through the air, and smashing fish against the concrete to kill them. Wild-caught fish suffer as they're quickly pulled from the ocean depths, similar to how human divers experience decompression sickness if they surface too quickly. Uh, the fish's eyes can bulge out of their heads and their stomachs can end up coming out of their mouths. Fishing is pretty much emptying our oceans, and a lot of the time, boats aren't even catching the fish humans eat. Some estimates say 40% of all animals in fishing nets are unintentionally caught. This includes turtles, dolphins, whales, and birds who slowly suffocate while they're trapped in these nets. And 500,000 to 1 million tons of fishing gear are lost or dumped in the ocean every year. It's a huge source of plastic pollution. Emissions for aquaculture and fishing are just slightly less than those for beef and more than any other kind of animal ag. Those are much higher than those of plant production, which had the lowest emissions. Who knew? I did. I knew. As for eating bugs, that's getting a lot of attention from the media. It's also getting circulated amongst the conspiracy-minded, where they think the New World Order's master plan includes the lower classes being forced to eat bugs. I assume they think the future is going to be like a Snowpiercer scenario? When people talk about eating bugs, they're mostly talking about crickets, grasshoppers, ants, and various larval insects like mealworms, which do seem to be high in protein. And yeah, insect farming seems to be responsible for less greenhouse gas emissions than other kinds of animal agriculture. It also requires a lot less land and water. Some insect farms say they're feeding their animals food waste, which would also help sustainability, except the majority of farmed insects are just being fed the same grains that other animals would get, because those are cheap and easy to source. And a study published in 2017 in the journal Global Food Security showed that soy provided over 25% more energy and nearly twice as much protein when compared to mealworms, the second most efficient option looked at, for the same amount of land. Despite most of the media attention being on bugs used as food for humans, most farmed insects are actually fed to other farmed animals, like fish or chickens. Some of those animals could have just been fed the grains that the insects get, so now it just seems like 
they're adding more unnecessary parts to animal agriculture. And yeah, it is hard to know what insects experience and feel. I don't really have the time to go over all the science on insect sentience right now, but there's a really good overview from Rethink Priorities. I recommend checking that out uh, at this URL that's on screen now. But basically there's research that does suggest some insects have physiological and behavioral responses that could be indicative of them being sentient. Things like changing their behavior in response to negative stimuli or having spatial memory. And personally, it just doesn't seem like a good idea to raise and kill all these insects while we don't know the depth of their suffering. Some farms can have hundreds of millions of insects on them at any given time, so that could be a lot of suffering. But maybe the predators in Zootopia are obligate carnivores, meaning their bodies don't digest plant matter well and they have a hard time getting nutrients like arachidonic acid, taurine, and vitamins A and B12 from non-animal sources. Maybe they haven't developed lab-grown meats that use vegan mediums, or develop synthetic nutrients. But if I lived in Zootopia, where a large portion of the population are carnivores, those things would probably be pretty high on my list to develop. I mean, they already have rocket ships and bootleg DVDs, and I think they solved fantasy racism in the movie. So, I mean, like, what are you even working on now? Go back to the forest, predator! I'm from the savannah! Oh, and to be clear, humans are not obligate carnivores. We have longer intestines than animals who can only digest meat, and we have a wide variety of teeth for a lot of different purposes. We can digest plants and get the necessary nutrients from those. Uh, I'm doing great, and I never eat bug burgers. I don't want it. I never have. To conclude, insect farming is potentially cruel and doesn't seem to be necessary when we can grow and eat plants and fishing and aquaculture are well known for their cruelty and unsustainable. Such a waste. That's pretty much it for today. Like and subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content, and I will see you at the next Gazelle concert.